So, fellas, I recently released my year-in-the-making project of what I called my ethno-racial map of the world, which is what I called my previous map that I had made the year before. But what exactly do I mean by an ethno-racial group? Because I don't think anyone else has used that term before to describe a map. Well, it means the categorization scheme of the various people groups I chose to represent have aspects of a racial group, but also an ethnicity. And to be as accommodating, accurate, and precise as possible, I tried to divide down to the lowest level without getting too cluttered. For instance, in my first map, I grouped together many groups because of what I assumed to be a shared identity and heritage, however, by glossing over some key differences in language, culture, or another factor, I couldn't get the most accurate picture possible. So, you can divide purely between religion, language, or genetics in order to get a mere one-dimensional picture of what the world really looks like, but I attempted to combine aspects of all three. Basically, my criteria while distinguishing between groups was to determine whether or not there was any sense of individual community among the group, and if so, whether they were distinct enough from surrounding people groups in order to accurately be considered independent. And you can absolutely disagree with me and criticize me on the way that I categorize the human species, and of course, I actively encourage that, as I want to get the most information as possible, and it's always fun to discover facts about other groups I'd never heard before. Before. So, when it comes to different racial classifications, it can be difficult for geneticists to pinpoint the exact distinctions between certain groups, but this is definitely not the case for Africans, who are very easily identified and distinguished from other groups, genetically speaking, due to the fact that the Sahara has isolated them for thousands, and in some cases tens of thousands of years. So, when it comes to Sub-Saharan Africans, I noticed that a lot of people were claiming that Horn Africans were simply too distinct from Sub-Saharan Africans to be considered a part of the same racial group, and a smaller number of people also claim that the Khoi and Pygmy populations should also be considered their own racial categories, since they actually have more genetic distance from other Africans than any other two groups on the planet, which actually has a lot of credence to it. However, unfortunately for us, between the six primary and secondary colors, one sort of color and one not even a color, it was quite daunting to come up with subsections since I would argue that there are more than eight clusters of human populations, but that was what I had to use. So essentially for African populations, I distinguish between five Niger-Congo groups, five Horn African groups, four Nilo-Saharan groups, and the rest were mostly smaller, some would say less significant ethnic categories. For instance, some people would say, why would you include groups like the Igbo, Yoruba, Akan, and Fan in the same category, yet such small groups like the Lemba, Swahili, or Hadza get their own distinctions. Essentially, the Swahili are the result of migration from the Persian Gulf to this region for many thousands of years, with the Swahili language having a large Arabic and Persian influence, as I'll discuss in an upcoming video. And the Lemba are a group in the middle of Africa that has claimed Jewish roots from ancient migrants, and although these claims have not been verified, they are still genetically and culturally distinct from the surrounding Bantu population, having at least some influence from the Middle East. The Hadza and Sandaway are literally so linguistically and genetically distinct, they've still yet to be fully understood or linked to any other human population, and their inclusion in the Khoisan family is mostly out of convenience, since they're some of the only human languages that contain click consonants. For diaspora groups like Black Americans, Afro-Hispanics, or Afro-Brazilians, because they're all descended from different regions of Africa with varying degrees of European, Amerindian, or other admixture, they were counted as many separate groups as it would be disingenuous to claim all African-descended peoples in the Americas have a common origin. Moving on to European groups, I think most people can agree with the different categorizations from a cultural, ethnic, and genetic point of view, and it really makes a lot more sense that Hungarians and Finns are not counted to be the same group as I included them the last time, simply because they shared the same language family, as they have extremely different origins. There are some people who argue that the Celtic ethnic identity no longer exists, or at least not to the extent that is portrayed on the map, and sure, maybe some Scots or Welsh are today 
Celtic in name only, no longer speaking their traditional Celtic language and have all but been assimilated into mainstream British culture, but I think it's still easily proven that their ethnic identity has not yet been entirely stamped out. Also, there was a surprisingly large amount of people who thought that Greeks and Turks should be included in the same group which is just odd, not only due to the extreme cultural, religious, and linguistic differences, but as I showed in an earlier video, ethnic Greeks tend to be more similar to southern Italians, Albanians, and other Balkan people, while Turks have minor Central Asian admixture and are far closer in appearance and genetics to Middle Easterners than Greeks are. Now, when it comes to Middle Eastern populations, I rebranded this group as Southwest Eurasian, mostly as to be inclusive to North Africans who have learned really, really do not like being called Middle Eastern, for the most part at least. But of course, even though they share a common origin, some Maghrebis and Egyptians are not too happy about having their pre-Arab history erased. So in order to find a middle ground of sorts, Berber-speaking populations were still considered to be distinct from the non-Berber-speaking population, who have somewhat been Arabized, although to what extent is up for debate. And the Arabic-speaking population of the Maghreb was considered distinct from other Arabic-speaking groups. This is how hundreds of African ethnic groups can fall under the single category of Bantu, since they all acknowledge their common heritage and origin, but a group that is sometimes considered to be a single ethnic group, the Arabs, are divided into several categories, since each subsection has different origins as the result of conquest and assimilation. Some people even said that I needed more diversity in the way of Arab populations, which I suppose is the difference between a strongly unified ethnicity such as the Swedes or Poles or Hungarians and a group such as the Arabs, who are technically classified not as an ethnicity, but a pan-ethnicity. Similar to the demarcation between Northwest and Southwest Eurasians, it's also difficult to distinguish between South and Southwest Eurasians, and South Asians have a large degree of Western Eurasian admixture, but I use language family to be the deciding factor. Even though this map was primarily to distinguish between ethnic and racial identities, it's worth noting that in South Asia, identity is primarily an issue of religion rather than ethnicity, and I wish this area could more properly reflect that. One could argue that the traditional linguistic aspect, which is the primary factor for determining ethnicity worldwide, is becoming less and less relevant in the increasingly multilingual South Asia, and that religion is becoming the real determinant in the region, as again I'll discuss in an upcoming video. I did consider Sri Lankan Moors to be their own ethnic category separate from Dravidians, as they claim a strong Arab heritage even before the arrival of Islam in the region, although I have yet to find any genetic studies that verify said claims. Eastern Eurasians were similar in that Southeast Asians have significant admixture from the indigenous Negrito populations that lived there before, and Central Asians are a hodgepodge race created through a fusion of many different groups, and hence have genetic connections to literally all parts of Eurasia, but were grouped together out of convenience sake. Southeast Asia is also one of those regions where religion is increasingly becoming the main identifier of culture and heritage rather than ethnicity, although not to the same extent as in South Asia. And in the Philippines, the culture and people have been very heavily Hispanicized through hundreds of years of Spanish rule, although never being as heavily incorporated as New Spain in the Americas. And although many Filipinos have Spanish names, the percentage with any sort of visible Spanish heritage remains in the single digits. I considered the Moluccans of Eastern Indonesia to be Oceanian rather than Eastern Eurasian because they have a very significant amount of pop in admixture, although they are certainly a mixed population, not falling into one category or the other. Same with Melanesians, Micronesians, and Polynesians, the Austronesian speakers of the Pacific, with Melanesians being around 80% Papuan in origin, Micronesians around 40%, and Polynesians around 25%, and hence it would be more accurate to classify the latter two as Eastern Eurasian, but that's how the U.S. Census defines it, and that's how I portrayed it last year, and hence I am a stubborn man, but I'll probably remedy that in the future. My classification of Amerindians from Northern America especially could use some work, but the groupings in Latin America do make some semblance of sense at least, with the Andes mountain range being a major division between Southern Amerindian groups. The Fuegians on the very southern tip of the continent, being among the oldest groups of migrants from Eurasia, are the most genetically distinct and have evolved quite the noteworthy traits living in such a frigid environment, 
as unlike the Inuit of the far north, the Yaghan hardly wore any clothes at all. For this reason, I also considered mestizos from Argentina and Chile of partial Fuegian descent to be distinct from other multiracial mestizos from South America, and in that regard, I also considered white Hispanics of the Americas to be separate from Iberians of Europe, as these Hispanics were essentially a fusion of many different people groups, including many Sephardi Jews, Gitano, Romani, Christianized Moors, and especially the Basques, who made up a huge proportion of immigrants to Spain's New World colonies early in its history. So if you're a real OG, you'll remember last year for my map, I included short summaries for the various ethno-racial categories, and this year I decided to do the same. It was nearly 30 pages of writing, so there's clearly no way I could have possibly narrated it in a 10 minute video, not to mention it would be rather monotonous. So link in the description to check it out on my subreddit and see my reasoning even further. It has around 10 videos worth of information in a single document, so it might take some time to peruse over. And I'll also be leaving some of my other work there for the future, free to download, edit, share, and critique as always. Now, while working on this map in the future, I'll probably distinguish between Sunni and Shia Arabs, Muslim, Hindu, and Christian Indo-Aryans, Anglo-Americans, and Englishmen, as well as possibly making further distinctions among the Bantu, other Niger-Congo-speaking, and Horn African populations. However, I'll just be working on this project sporadically, rather than just spurging out and dedicating nearly an entire month to finish it in one setting like I did with this project. As opposed to most of my videos, this did contain a lot of my raw, unfiltered opinion, and hopefully this has given you an insight into my mind and how I view the world. If you agree, that's great. If not, I'd love to hear your opinion. I know my work could always be improved upon, so for today's poll, let me know which region of the map you would like to see more detail on. I'll update you guys soon, and as always, thank you so much for watching. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.